All right, so this is your creative process. Yeah, you, the guy I've been talking to this entire time. Um, it's basically the process you go through every time you try to make something, and I, I thought I'd sketch it out to, to look at. Um, it starts with having the idea up here. This is like the most exciting part for me is um, I drew this as like a cloud kind of striking me with inspiration, but however you want to define it, like God gives you the idea or whatever. I'm thinking like, this is genius. This is going to change everything. Um, and it's pure, right? Because it's just something that exists in your own head. It hasn't had to meet reality yet. But then for this process, this is just kind of like for a standard YouTube video, but like, you know, this kind of applies to anything you're working on. Um, you make it more real. You add layers of reality to it as you go. So for me, this is like scripting, filming, and then editing. So scripting, you have to pick certain words to convey the idea. And when you're doing that, you do kind of have to make it a little bit more real, a little bit more coherent, uh, with the words you're choosing, but it's still pretty abstract, right? It's just words on the page. Then you get to filming, and then, okay, now you're starting to deal with the visual information people are going to see. And then when you're editing it, this is like exactly what they're going to see. And every step along the way makes it more real. You're, you're headed towards the real direction, but you're also making the idea more flawed. It's running into resistance with reality and getting warts and problems with it. And eventually you get to the point where you're like, this isn't what I imagined. And you might be doing something like at this stage that you never thought you'd be doing at this stage. Like you're communicating maybe even different ideas based off of the actual um, tangible reality of what you're doing. Um, and and this, this disconnect between the idea and reality can cause you some discomfort. I always get to this part where I'm like, something's wrong with me around here. Um, and this is something a lot of my clients tell me. They're like, oh, you know, I must have brain damage or something like I must be mentally challenged because I can't, I don't know why I'm doing this or I don't know how I got here. Or I don't know, you know, where I went wrong in this process. And you didn't really go wrong anywhere. You're just like, this is just an essential part of the process. Um, so there's like plenty of ways of like bailing on your project as you go as well. Like with scripting, you can just script, you can ideate forever, basically. With filming, you'd be like, oh, well, my lighting wasn't right with this take. I got to do it again and again and again. Oh, I could have phrased that better. I could have articulated that better, whatever. Um, maybe maybe you don't have a prop, huh? Maybe you like, you're like you missing a prop. And you're like, well, I can't film now. I don't have a prop. Um, well, and there might be some ways of getting around that. For example, like I'm filming this in the audio room. I want to film this outside, but there's you know people in the studio right now, so I just ducked into the audio room. Not ideal, but again, I, if I did do that, I wouldn't film it, and then it wouldn't get done. Um, so yeah, that's one way of giving up. Um, you can, you can like bail at, at, on the project at any of these phases, or you can return to the womb. Um, so right now on, uh, some musical things I'm working on, um, I'm like, at the, something is wrong with me, uh, desire to go back up increasing. I want to return to the womb. Typically when you're working on projects, you have more ideas for other projects, right? And so you want to get distracted and you want to work on something else. This is exactly what I'm doing right now with this graph that I just drew up. Because I'm, I'm should be doing something else right now, but instead I'm like maybe I'll write up my entire creative process in in, in a fun little graph format for my second channel. Um, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so I, I retreated back up here to ha having this new fun idea uh, where I have a little fun little graph that I explain, and now I'm just kind of speed running this process. But even in this process, which only takes me like a few hours, I'm still going through like the something is wrong with me phase. Um, so yeah, uh, that's one way of, of giving up is just kind of like retreating over here. Although, uh, you know, presumably we return to the original idea, presumably. Um, but you also just like finally like truly give up and like not finish it ever. And then I call that the idea perishes in the womb. It's just it's like you're pregnant with a concept and it died inside of you. Uh, gross. Um, and then, you know, I, I will see things that remind me of the project that I could have completed. And I am kind of haunted by these fetuses. Um, <laughs> these dead fetuses haunt me all the time. And I think, oh man, I should have made that. I should have made that, but I didn't. And now I don't want to do it anymore, but I should have made it. Um, and also when you give up on a project, you kind of reinforce giving up on projects as like a pattern of behavior, um, as opposed to finishing the project, even when it's bad. So that's what happens when you actually post it. And by posting, I just mean like you put it out into the world in a way where it's complete and finished, or at least finished enough and people can see it. And then you'll get like actual feedback. Um, you can get like pre feedback before you post it, but like after you post it, you will get like actual feedback. I don't know how big your feedback pool is. It could be if you're just getting started out, you have like 20 followers and your posts get like, I don't know, one to three likes. And if you get like three likes, you're like, oh yeah, that was a banger. Like if you're making memes or something, oh yeah, three likes, another banger. Um, it could be you posted on, you know, you marked it on Reddit or whatever and like um, you get downvoted and like that's the only feedback you get. It's hard, it's tough. 
tough out here for an artist, but that, you know, that might be your only feedback, uh, depending on where you are. But hopefully you're, you have some sort of process that lets you have some amount of feedback, even if it's just showing it to some friends and seeing what they say about it. Um, then you post, you might get the post-post depression when you work on something for a really long time and then you don't know what to do with yourself afterwards. Realistically, you should move on to the next project right away, but you might want to linger and dwell on what's already been done, even though there's nothing really you can do about it at this point. Um, but typically, you know, for me, it's like a couple of weeks. I can like look back on the project pretty objectively. And when I do that, I think, ah, this was actually pretty good. Like basically every time I finish something and I put it out, I'm like, ah, this is good. It was fine. Um, not as bad as I thought it was over here when I'm like, oh, this is terrible. Something's wrong with me. I'm like, oh yeah, this is, eh, it was actually pretty good. Um, and when you do actually get something out, then you're going to have more ideas because the process of working on it generates new ideas. And then you can go right back up here and start the process again with maybe even some better ideas because the more you do it, the better your ideas become. And you also get more artistic continuity. This is like a positive feedback loop is like, now you have like a backlog you can look back on and be like, well, I, I did this and I did that and I did this. And so, and you can also look back on it like three years and you can realize where you were at that time in your life. So that's, it's good for you as well. It's like, if that's a, that's an example of making art. It's not just for other people, but it's also for like your future self. It's, it's like a, it's like an inter temporal communication between you and like <laughs> your future where like you're doing, you're going to be making art in the future, but then like the art you make in the future is going to be very different from the art you're making now. I mean, it's kind of like a goalpost for like, okay, this is what I was doing then. This is what I'm doing now. Uh, it's it's continuity. It's artistic continuity, which is good. Um, as opposed to letting it die in your room. Now, sometimes you will give up on ideas. It's really not the end of the world when you give up an idea. Um, the fetus ghosts will, will haunt you, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, if you're giving up on like every idea you start, though, you probably do just want to get it out, you know? Like, uh, even, even, even if you think it's terrible. <laughs> because then... You just might be too caught up in this, the ideas keep perishing in your womb loop without like actually releasing them into the world. Pregnancy, male pregnancy. I went for that as a metaphor for this one. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, you really want to push past this, 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 uh, getting a flawed idea, a terrible idea to being a real idea. Because when it's real, when it's like an actual thing you can communicate, then that's the whole point of it. That's all the value you've added. The idea doesn't really matter. It's like the the, the effort you put into the idea that gives it the value, right? Like just having the idea in and of itself isn't that important. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. I think you'll be newly shocked, even if you know this pattern every time you do it, um, because... Every time I do it, I'm <laughs> newly shocked. I'm like, oh man, I wasn't expecting to hate this again, but here I am. Um, and even the knowledge that this happens doesn't really take away the sting of it. So <laughs> anyway, this is obviously an erotic way of going about things and not everybody is as neurotic as me. I understand this, um, but this is, this, is, this is what happens with me like basically every time. Specifically, the something is wrong with me part is uh, something that the, my clients have, have talked about a lot uh, when, I, when I talk it through with them. They're all... There's always like this point in terms of resistance where you're like, something is like spiritually, metaphysically incorrect with me right now. And um, you're, you're probably right, but those things were incorrect with you before you were making art. Now it's just being bubbled up to the surface. So um, yeah, I don't know. That's something I talked through on my calls, which I have three slots available for in April and you can sign up for before uh, April, the first week of April is done and you can, you can sign up until then. 